Hello scholars, welcome to today's Manuscript Spotlight. Today, we'll be reading from a group of papyri known as the Bodmer Miscellaneous Codex. These papyri were originally part of a single codex containing Jude, 1 Peter, and 2 Peter. The codex has been dated to the 3rd or 4th century AD, making it the earliest known complete manuscript of these letters. Along with these epistles are several apocryphal works, including The Nativity of Mary, the third letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the eleventh ode of Solomon, Melito's sermon, and a one-page hymn. Some scholars have argued that first and second Peter were not originally part of the Codex, but whether or not this is the case is still inconclusive. The manuscript was most likely intended for personal use, and is written in Greek with an informal script with some stylization. I personally like the nearly square layout of the pages. It gives me the feeling of something like a handbook or a pocket Bible. Unfortunately, only scans of the Epistle of Jude are available for free online, as far as I can tell, so that's what I'll be reading from today. I found this manuscript particularly difficult to read, and frequently had to check my readings with an interlinear Bible. I'd recommend Bible Hub, or Blue Letter Bible, as free and easy-to-use resources for an interlinear Greek and Hebrew Bible. Now for the reading, beginning in Jude 1. Judas, Jesu Christo Dulas. Adelphas de Jacobo, tois en theo patri egapemenois, kai Jesu Christo teteremenois, kletois eleas humin, kai airene, kai agape plethunein. Agape toi, pasan spuden poiumenas, to grafen humin, peri tes koines humon, Soterias anagen eskon, grapsai humin parakalon, epagenosestai, te hapax paradothese, tois agios piste. Now for the translation. For this video, I'll be using a variety of English translations, depending on what best helps with understanding the Greek. Judas, Jesu Christu Dulas. Jude a servant of Jesus Christ, Adelphas de Jacobo, and brother of James, and here Jacobon, or Jacob, is the Greek form of James, tois en theo patri egapemenois, to those beloved in God the Father, caiso Christo teteremenois kletois, and kept for Jesus Christ, who are called Eleas humin, mercy to you, kai airene, and peace, kai agape plethune, and love be yours in abundance, or be multiplied. Agape toi, pasan spuden poiumenas. Beloved, although I was very eager, or literally all eagerness I used, tu grafen humin, to write to you, Peri tes koines hemon soterias, about our common salvation. Anaken eschon grapsai humin, I found it necessary to write to you. Parakalon epagonizes thy, appealing to you to contend. Te hapax paradothese tois hagios piste for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Here we see Jude writing a letter, and initially wanting to write about the topic of their common salvation, but he felt it was more necessary to urge them to contend for the faith that was in danger. He describes this threat in verse 4 as people slipping in among them who twist the teachings of Christianity and deny Jesus as Lord. The majority of the remainder of this letter is Jude's condemnation of these false believers. As the scribe reached the end of copying this letter, their handwriting became noticeably messier, and mistakes like spelling errors and dropped words became more frequent. This is likely because the codex was intended for personal use and the scribe was rushing the finish. If you follow along with these verses, you will likely notice numerous variations from the standard text. Starting in verse 20. Humais de agape toi, te he auton Hagiotate piste yokodomais, en numati hagio praseokhomenoi, eautos 
en agape theou teresomen, pras de kamenoi ta eleas to curio ai zoen hemon Jesu Christo aionion, us men ek puras harpazonte diacrimenus de eleate en phobo mesontes kai ton apo te sarcos espilomenoi chitona. The number of errors in this manuscript make it difficult to analyze, so I have included the standard Greek text for the transcription. There are grammar and spelling errors in nearly every sentence in the manuscript, but I'll only comment on when the manuscript has significant differences from the standard text. One important note is that in Greek, sentence meaning is primarily determined by word endings, unlike in English, where sentence meaning is largely determined by word order. This means that the positions of words in a Greek sentence can be swapped around with minimal impact to the meaning of the sentence. We have Humais de agapetoi, but you beloved, epoi godomontes eautos, building yourselves up, te hagiotate humon piste, in your most holy faith. And the scribe inserted the building yourselves up after this segment in the manuscript. And numati hagio praseo kamenoi, and praying in the Holy Spirit, heautos en agape theo teresate, keep yourselves in the love of God, praste kamenoi ta eleas, waiting for the mercy, to curio hemon Jesu Christo, of our Lord Jesus Christ, ais zoen aionion that leads to eternal life. It appears that the scribe missed copying Jesus Christ and eternal, and instead just inserted them at the end of this sentence. Caius men eleate diacrenamenus, and have mercy on those who doubt. Us de sozete, save others, ec puras rapazontes, by snatching them out of the fire. These two segments were swapped in the manuscript, and the save was dropped. Us de eleate en phobo, to others show mercy with fear. Misuntes kai ton apo te sarcas espilomenon kitona, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Jude gives some final exhortations to his recipients, which are still applicable to Christians today to build themselves up in faith, to pray in the Holy Spirit, and to keep themselves in God's love. Jude also tells them to have mercy on those who doubt, while keeping well clear of the dangers he warned about earlier in his letter. Finally, he concludes with a superb doxology, considered by many to be the finest in the New Testament, starting in verse 24. To de dunameno sterizai aspeton samo agneumenus Apenape tes doxes auto en agaliase, mano theo hemon auto doxa kratos time dia Jesu Christo to curio hemon auto doxa kai megalosune kai nun kai aistos pantas aionas. Amen. And for the translation, to de dunameno, now to him who is able, phylaxai humas aptaistos, to protect you from stumbling. Here, the scribe has replaced phylaxai, to guard, with sterixai, to establish or make fast. Kaistesai, and to make you stand, or to present you. Katenopion tes doxes auto, in the presence of his glory. I spent nearly an hour looking at the from stumbling and make you stand in the presence portion of this manuscript, and could not make out what the scribe was intending to write. Please let me know if you have any ideas on what the intended words were. Amomus en agalease, blameless with great joy. Blameless is dropped from the manuscript here. Mano theo, to the only God, soteri hemon, our Savior, 
and here a savior is dropped from the manuscript. Dia Yeso Cristo Tokurio Hemon through Jesus Christ our Lord. Doxa Meglosune Kratos Kai Exousia Be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority. This manuscript ascribes glory, dominion, and honor to Jesus instead here, possibly referencing Revelation 5.13. Prapentas to Ionas, before all time. The manuscript doesn't include this line. Kainun, and now. Kaiais pantas tos Ionas, amen. And now and forever, amen. This codex is incredibly significant as the earliest surviving full copy of Jude, 1 Peter, and 2 Peter, as well as another reminder that scribes were human and made mistakes, like we still do today. I hope you've enjoyed reading this manuscript together and have been encouraged by its words. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Now, I'll leave you once again with the words of Jude's doxology. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again on the next Manuscript Spotlight.